As uh, we mentioned in the first hour last night, um, watching the kind of back and forth between the city's official stream and uh, Jason White's uh, Facebook Live event, um, <laughs> which then uh, extended after the council meeting uh, over to his uh, home where he was taking questions and, and answering questions from folks online. And uh, I don't recall exactly what the deal was other than um, KIT and myself uh, came up and, and uh, after reading a couple comments, I invited him to come on the show today at 7.15 and he's on the phone today Hello. at 7.15. Jason White, good morning. Good morning. So Jason, I, I have the sense just from some of the comments that you made uh, about the Herald that you don't necessarily think that the, your true side of the story got out there. Uh, so here's a chance for you to um, explain mm -hmm. your take on all of this. Um, what, what is, as a duly elected council member, one of seven in the city, um, what you, you were censured last night, uh, and what's, what's your take on what got you there, the process, and what happens next? Well, I mean, I'm here to represent the average person, and uh, not too many people in government want to do that. Um, I spoke my mind. A lot of people agree with me. A lot of people, uh, you know, stop me on the streets and let me know how much they appreciate me standing up for the average person and to um, keep up the good fight. Gotcha. Uh, but is, uh, you know, let's maintain this to the charges because without them, we're not even having this conversation. So you calling somebody names on Facebook, which is one of the charges against you, whether people feel that, that this should rise to that level or not, that's one of the charges. They, they say that that violates the uh, respect clause of the Code of Ethics. Uh, are people telling you, way to go, call people names on Facebook, or, or how do you address that no, particular one for starters? The Code of Ethics and the um, Council Ability is, is completely subjective, and it's a, uh, it's, uh, hey, you hurt my feelings, now we're going to censure you. It's ridiculous. All right, so They're you, censoring. in fact, last night you were indicating that you didn't think we should even have one. Is that true? Absolutely. It's completely made up by our city council and just to control people. That's how. That's what it's there for, is to control people. You, What's your... All right, go ahead. Lance. I was just going to say, do you, you, you stand behind your words still this morning, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. What about code of ethics for businesses and uh, other institutions? Yeah. There Are they a waste of time as well? Well, I mean, I'm in government. I'm here to represent the people. Right. People but, have a, a broad range of perspectives. They don't all just... They're not all politically politically correct and people are tired of people being politically correct all the time and saying nothing and doing nothing no i get that um and and that's i think it's that spirit that you're being up, applauded for by those who are i i totally get that um but i guess the question is uh we see that the codes of conduct and codes of ethics e exist all, all across society uh from uh you know mom and pop shops to uh the federal government and and every stop along the way and so uh, it's it's a nationally accepted. Uh, we have codes of conduct uh, at our radio station. That uh, you know. yes, we are elected officials by the people. So, to Fernando, their, their conclusion is to vote us in or vote us out if they don't like what we're saying. Not right. for the council to decide on whether we get to participate or not. That's what they're doing. The council now is saying that all those fifteen thousand people in my district no longer matter. That their voices are no longer valid because of a of a of a hurt feeling. That's what they're saying. That's not a, that's not the same as a company. A company can hire or fire somebody based on on words. But we're elected officials, and I have the right, right to stand up and speak different perspectives that are out there in the community, even if they hurt your feelings. Yeah. Well, okay. So maybe that's that's true. Uh, but there are codes of conduct in government all, all across. So your, your unique position, and, and I just want to take this step by step, your unique position is that an elected person should be able to say and do what they want until it gets, rises to the level that voters uh, don't elect you again. Is that fair? They should, they should be able to speak the truth. And if, they, if the people don't appreciate right, but, that or if they, don't, if they see it differently, then, yes, they vote them out. Okay. So, but, and, you know, there are many uh, situations where one person's truth is not another person's truth. So the bottom line is, as an elected person, you should have free range until the voters have had enough and vote you out. What about a recall? Do, 
you know, if you've got people in your district, that's totally separate, by the way, from what the council has done. The, the recall idea is not part of the censure. People need to separate those two. If you have people in your district that, uh, and they can get the, the, the votes to put it on a ballot, and you're, obviously then you must be comfortable with that because that's the whole point that you're making. You have a right to say what you want to say until the people say enough, right? Well, Liz, well, for sure, but Liz Halleck's not even in my district, for one. Um, her business isn't in my district. Um, I, she doesn't have a clue what's going on in the real world. Um, but, yeah, sure, if, if that's what my voters wanted, then that would be, that would be great. If that's, what, if that's what the will of the people was, that would be great. But, obviously, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in, in this term, that's for sure. Well, okay, and, and it may not. Uh, and if it doesn't, then that kind of vindicates – uh, the position that you're taking. Um, the fact that the lawyer handling the case is not in your district, I don't think is relevant as long as there's people in your district that are willing to uh, lead the charge. She's just handling the legal side of stuff. Do you think uh, you're going to get, do you think there's enough signatures out there to make, make that successful in your opinion, Jason? Well, I mean, she wants to violate the, um, the entire thing by getting an online petition too. So she has to go through so many extra steps. Um, huh. To get it, but I mean, 200 signatures are which should be doable to get because there are 200 people that didn't vote for me. There's 200 people that voted for Pablo. Yeah. So why would it be out of the question to get 200 and some signatures? Yeah, it shouldn't be. But um, again, I guess as someone who's suggesting your position is just go out there and do your thing, that they ought to be able to just go out there and collect their signatures and not do it electronically, right? I mean, uh, COVID be damned, get back to work. COVID be damned, go out and collect your your signatures and and don't do it electronically. Is that a fair characterization? I, 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 I support her doing it. Like, if that's what the judge requires, I support that. I mean, we have we have changing times, and if if you need to get it electronically, then by all means, get it electronically. I'm I'm personally I'm okay with that with the, with the circumstances. Gotcha. All right. Um, well, let's move on to the other part of the charge, and that has to do with the uh, health and safety thing. Um, you you have worked in uh, nutrition more or less with foods and and our proponent of uh, vitamins and immunity uh, bolstering and that sort of thing. I think I've seen where you've said that, you know, uh, zinc and vitamin C can stop coronavirus. Uh, is, is that your contention? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and again, because not everybody knows you, you're the District 2 guy. Um, and I know you were, were you like a, a medic or something in the in the military? I was a medic in the Army, yeah, physical therapy, um, yeah, and spent most of my life in, in, in health and okay. nutrition. So, so you have a, a, a background to a degree in this sort of thing, right? Um, and is, yeah. is that what you draw on then to reach the conclusions that might be uh, counter, uh, contradictory to what the, the state and others are saying? Is that um, where you draw your... No, okay. uh, no this information is uh, being spread throughout the world. It's just being squashed. There's hospitals treating with vitamin C. There's people are treating themselves with vitamin C and, and zinc and other vitamins. Uh, there's doctors screaming this stuff on social media and they're not getting heard. This is not, this is not coming from me personally. This is coming from doctors actually treating this. Okay. Uh, so many of my friends have said that they went to their doctor and gave them, the doctors gave them their exact same advice. And the CDC is fully neglecting this fact that you need to take care of your immune health and that these these, these vitamins will deter the uh, viral load in your body interesting all right well i don't think anybody who's reasonable would disagree that having as uh, active and as uh, invigorated immune system as possible is a good thing i mean that's got to be a good thing regardless uh, in any situation but if there's a dangerous virus out there that that uh, you could come in, uh, in contact with the stronger your own immune system, the better you'd be able to fight it. All right, so, but here, you know, there's a, here's the, the crux of the matter. The, your, your fellow council members have uh, agreed uh, to follow the guidelines and have issued the, the emergency guidelines for Yakima, and you disagree with those. Um, what's, the, what's the appropriate way... Uh, to deal with that. If, if, if they're censoring you, they're saying that's not appropriate. So say you had to play their game, 
what how, how would you do it differently or 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 would you or is there, or is there are you just in defiance of the game you have knowledge and you have the right to put it out there even if it contradicts what you know the majority of elected by good people just like you city council members think so how how do you state your protest without running a foul of censure well they can do whatever they want and i can do i can i can put that information the council can censure me that doesn't stop me from speaking what I know. And people are listening. People are listening and they're and they're understanding it too and they're out there doing their own research and they're um, they're learning that they don't need to rely on on government for their for their um, to what to do and what not to do and to take they need to take personal responsibility back. And that's my whole thing is people getting pers- taking back their personal sovereignty and taking back their personal responsibility for their lives. Because government is in- incapable of doing so. So why then did you choose to run for government, or was this part of a, a bigger strategy all along that uh, you know once I'm in, I'll be able to show people you know how ridiculous it is that we're well, that we are? I mean, how how did that come about? I, I believe in a lot of things. Transparency, transparency, real transparency of government is absolutely critical, so people can see what's really going on in our government, and so people can actually realize that they're the ones that need to stand up and take responsibility for their lives, not rely on the government to do so. And if I can expose what's really going on in the government, like I've been able to do a little bit to this point, then people will understand that um, that they can do something about their lives and that they should not be relying on government. Well, what's been exposed so far, in your opinion? What do you feel that you've uh, accomplished so far with this? Well, I mean, with, with, with this? Sure, or, what, or whatever else it is that you feel that you've exposed. Your, your call. Well, that there's people that right now, for one, that there's people in government that have common perspective. That's one thing that people, that's why so many people are disenfranchised because they don't think people in government are real people because they never say anything real. They never, they never speak up for the common person. They don't speak, they don't act and speak like the common person, and I do. Well, um, okay. You, so you would t- tell me that that somebody like uh, Pat Byers doesn't care about common people and and real people, is that your contention? No, no that's a that's a that's that's way off topic. That's way off what I said. I said that they don't I said speak for real people. That's what you said. They don't speak and act like real people. Patricia Byers says what everybody wants to hear, and she's very good at that. She she says she's great for for doing public speeches and you know saying all these positive things and. And doing all this, but she doesn't. Um, she doesn't talk about the real issues that the, the real feelings that a lot of people have, and a lot of the, their thoughts and and what they're really going through. She doesn't speak on those things. She says the politically correct thing, and that's not what people want to hear all the time. You have mentioned that you're you know a guy from the hood, and when you came out of the council meeting, you said, "Hey, it was really gangster of you guys to stay in this long," and all of that. Um, is your understanding of the real people uh, significantly different than somebody who's not from your neighborhood? Do you, do you think it's possible that you have a, a unique perspective on things? I Well, I definitely have a, you, my own unique perspective on, on things, yes. That meaning that uh, you see your, the, the way you are and the way you represent as being true to the to the people um is it possible that these other folks think they're true to the people that they know and how they are i mean it, it's because it, you you've got a position now as a uh, sort of a i'm right you're all the rest of you guys are wrong versus you're all right in your own way because you all have your own perspective no i never said everybody else was wrong but isn't i never even insinuated that but but isn't that the practical outcome if a council acts in majority to send a safety message and you on your space contradict that message and tell people to grow a pair and get back to work are you not in essence saying that the other guys are, are, are wrong i mean that's the practical reality of what you're doing well, they, are, they are they are completely wrong in this and that i'm not i'm not well, out there, there go anybody for for being for having a different perspective i'm saying you need to get back you need to take responsibility for your life or you're not going to have anything there left if you just sit home and sit sit on your couch and eat your ice cream and uh, do nothing throughout this process, you're going to be in an incredibly bad position. If you're sitting there waiting on somebody else, yes, you're going to be in a bad position. Okay. 
How about uh, just in terms of uh, firsthand knowledge? Do you know anybody who's had the virus? I mean, uh, yourself? No. I've had people tell me that they've known somebody that had the virus, but that's, yeah. that's so subjective also because everything is being labeled as a virus. Yeah, that's so true. Who there, there's, really a, has it? there's a major problem so, with that, Jason. You're absolutely right. But let's see, like last night you said we never had more than a dozen people in the hospital. There's 25 people in the hospital right now. So I just that's, I, and I and I and I verified that I I said that I did I had the word of mouth that I heard that okay, from somebody but talking to as a to as a <laughs> responsible council person should word of mouth be but what you share or do you have a responsibility to present you know the, the facts I I clarified that statement as I was saying it that I said that if I was to speak on that I would want to speak to those people at the hospital personally, one-on-one, and I said that that's probably an opportunity with everything going on at the hospital right now and people and, and doctors being fired for for having a different stance and speaking up for people at the hospital and, and, currently. And you know that, again, because of word of mouth, or you know that's the reason? I know that because people have messaged me personally. Okay. Uh, uh, anything else? Uh... It's been about 15, 20 minutes. Lance, you got anything you want to ask? You know, I just, if there could, if you could speak to your other council members, if they were sitting in front of you right now, Jason, what would you say? About what happened last night? About what? I, you know, what? I think it's a lose-lose situation for them. What do they do? I mean, it looks like they're stifling freedom of speech uh, to the average person. And so a lot of people agree with me. I think it just... um, I mean, if people people were watching, it was probably the most watched council meeting yeah. yet. I mean, there's 3,000 views on, on my my feet alone. So, I mean, I'm glad that people are getting involved with politics right now, and they can see just the people – the they can actually see what's going on in the council meetings. So I'd say keep doing what they're doing because uh, I think it's going to be irrelevant here pretty soon. What do you mean by that? Yeah. I think that most government's going to be irrelevant. People are standing up. People, like the, the, the old method is dying. The old method of government is dying, and we're going to be moving into a new system. What that looks like, I don't know. But it's not going to be the same old traditional sit around this horseshoe, say nothing, do nothing, be politically correct. And that, that, that method does not serve the people at all. So the, what, what, you know, a lot of people are, are talking about that, Jason, that the – the thing that will be the most interesting that comes out of this is the societal changes, be it in education, medicine, yeah. government, whatever, that uh, that the, the coronavirus sponsors moving forward. One of the things that you talked about was uh, are you have a concern for uh, the, the food supply and stuff going forward. Did I hear that right last night? Absolutely. Um, I think we're lucky living in this valley, being such a food-rich um, industry personally so we can eat, if we can get our hands on that food. But um, but the entire uh, sector is going to be hurt uh, greatly, you know, with the um, with blocking uh, immigrant workers from uh, blocking the supply, the supply chain. We're probably going to go to some kind of cold war with China. Um, so that whole that whole that whole just in time system is is falling apart as we speak, and that globalization system is completely falling apart. And that's we're we're heavily relying on that as our as our in our valley for agriculture and, and monocropping. I think that monocropping is going to be a thing of the past also because people are not going to trust things coming from outside of their area. People already are getting that feeling and they're getting that sense. And the more that this goes on, the less people are going to trust something coming from abroad, gotcha. coming from maybe even a different state. So um yeah, we're going to go through a big, big transition here, and I think we're just getting started with the transition. And if we're not looking forward, if we're not paying attention to what's actually going on and changing our lives now, that the next year, 21, is going to be incredibly difficult for people. Interesting. All right, um, one last thought for me, uh, and then uh, last word is yours. Uh, some of the imagery, there's a couple mm-hmm. dozen people that showed up last night to uh, – cheery on and uh, horns honking as they drove by and all of that. And some of the imagery is, uh, you know, uh, 1776-ish in its uh, and look and feel. Don't tread on me, um, original flags, that sort of thing. Do you sort of feel like you're the, the 2020 version of uh, early patriots in terms of taking a stand against uh, you know, what you would view as tyranny? I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but but that seems to be uh, the the language and the 
and the spirit in, in many ways that, uh, that it's 1776 all over again. Am I way off base on that, or is that kind of what you feel? No, I think, I think tyranny is the right word. Um, clearly, the, gov- the governor is overstepping his boundaries. The, um, his um, executive order, or his, um, his order, his, um, that it should only last 30 days, and he's gone well past that. Um, Franklin County just um, issued that they're no longer going to recognize the governor's uh, shutdown. So, um, yeah, it, it is tyranny. And um, I am the one that people are recognizing as anti-establishment or, or speaking up for, for the average person. So, yeah, that seems to be the, um, the case. Kind of George Washington of Yakima then, right? The, the Washington of Washington, maybe. Um, all right. Look, I appreciate your time this morning. Last word is yours. I know that, uh, that you feel that you don't necessarily get a fair chance to uh, put it out there. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that you felt you had fair treatment and an opportunity to have your say here. There may be folks calling in to support you. There may be people calling in to uh, take issue with some of what you say. But I wanted you to have the sense that you had, you know, uninterrupted time to, to make your case. So the last word is yours. No, I, I think I've said everything. All right. Well, thank I, you, Jason. I appreciate your time this morning. Um, uh, and we'll watch to see how things play out uh, going forward. I guess uh, if, if you support what Franklin County's doing, uh, any interest in, in trying to move our commissioners that way or, or uh, mount Absolutely. something. So we might expect to see something like that uh, in the days to come maybe, huh? Hopefully. That's, uh, that's the goal. All right, uh, Jason White, Councilman, uh, District 2, Yakima. Uh, Thank you, sir, and I appreciate you calling in.